hope you are all well. September the 6th is Read a Book Day. So today I'm going to be talking about seven books that I have recently read that you can read in one day. If you've watched any of my videos before, welcome back. To those who are new, I am so glad that you are joining us. My name is Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Today I am going to share books written by diverse authors from Canada, the USA, Vietnam, and Mexico. There are Indigenous authors and authors that identify as LGBTQIA2S+, and of course diverse genres. These books include poetry and mystery, or crime story, a memoir, short story, and fiction. If that is something that appeals to you, then please hit subscribe and stick around. At the end of the video, I will also share a list of 20 more books that you can read in a day. And as always, I will leave links in the description below. First, I need to have a quick rant about a pet peeve. I am obviously not the first booktuber to talk about books you can finish in one day. But I find that some booktubers will say, here's a book you can read in a day. It's 300 or 350 or sometimes 400 pages long. And I get that technically, if you have eight to 10 hours in a day to read, and depending on how fast you read, you could actually finish it within 24 hours. But when I say that I'm going to offer books you can read in a day, I mean it in a practical way. So if you work, if you have kids, and if you want to still get some sleep, but you were able to set aside 20 minutes to three hours on a quiet evening, maybe with a glass of wine, then these are the books that you can really finish in an average day. The good books I'm going to be talking about range from 30 pages to 191 pages. I'm going to talk about these books from the most to least pages. That means we begin with one of the most beautiful books I own. At 191 pages, Live Oak with Moss by Walt Whitman includes 12 poems that have never been published like this before. The book itself is beautiful. I love the texture of the cover. It is raised and the pages are sprayed gold. Brian Selznick illustrated this book in such a unique way. He didn't illustrate the poems, but in my opinion, it is as if he illustrates the beginning to bring us into the poems and the story that they tell. And then after reading the poems and the story, you are brought back out of the story through his illustrations. When Whitman was turning 40, he wrote these 12 poems, which were his first intense reflections on the love and attraction he felt for other men. There is history in these poems, as it is in them that he attempts to define same-sex love, decades before the word homosexual is a common word. He also dreams of a supportive and loving community, a hundred years before today's LGBTQ rights movement. The end of the book includes pictures of the original poems in Whitman's notebook, and Karen Carbiner wrote the afterword. In it, she gives us some history of Whitman and explains where the poems come from. This is the first time I've read Whitman, and I love how this book was brought together. The afterword is actually the bulk of the, the reading. It's probably about 30 pages long, but I think it's worth the time to read. I already loved the book, the beautiful illustrations, and the poems were fine, but it's the afterword that made me really appreciate what I was holding in my hands and what my eyes were absorbing. Next up is a memoir that was published in August. It is 171 pages, and it's called A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. Billy Ray Belcourt has been on my radar for a while. He is an incredible Canadian poet. He has won many awards for his poetry and writing. And I love the title of this memoir. And the beautiful cover art is collage is by a Niagara artist by the name of Maggie Grote. This memoir is very poetic in itself. There were so many lines that I could have highlighted for the use of language, the unique phrasing, and for the poignant messages. The memoir starts with a beautiful letter to the author's kokum, or grandmother. It's obvious that he has a special relationship with her. Then Belcourt shares experiences with us as readers, 
as he grapples with how he fits in mentally, emotionally, and physically in the world as an Indigenous queer man. He is not shy about topics such as how Indigenous people are mistreated, the increase in suicides, homophobia, and systemic racism. All hot topics here in Canada and our world right now. A heads up that there are a couple of explicit sex scenes. So be aware of that if you are going to read this. I think that Belcourt is an important voice and I look forward to reading his poetry and I hope more novels, um, whether he puts out nonfiction or fiction, um, I would definitely read all of those from him as well. The third book is 130 pages. It's called V by Vietnamese Canadian author Kim Thuy. Kim Thuy is originally from Vietnam and immigrated to Canada when she was 10 years old. This is the second of her three books that I have read. V is translated from French into English. The chapter titles are in the columns and certain words and phrases are in English if they need to be translated. What I love most of Thuy's books is the writing. The language is lyrical and her descriptions of food and settings are written so incredibly well. You will be able to taste the food and feel like you have stepped into any place she describes. I also love that I always learn about other cultures and she writes about cultures she knows so it feels authentic because it is. I didn't fall in love with any characters from V. To me, none of them were developed in great depth. And this book is fiction, but I think that Kim Thuy used V, the main character, to share some autobiographical information. They have a lot in common. Besides the immigration experience of leaving Vietnam and coming to Montreal, Canada, they also study the same subjects, and I'm sure there is more. I would like to know just how much Thuy used of herself in this story. A memoir from her would be highly anticipated. Open Heart Surgery is a poetry collection by Johanna Leo, a debut author. Johanna is originally from Mexico and is now based in Hawaii. Open Heart Surgery is 116 pages. It is divided into three sections, Funhouse Mirrors, Muscle Memory, which are her poems, and then a third section that invites the readers to reflect and be creative using different prompts. The line drawings on the cover and sprinkled throughout are by Michelle Gomez, and they do add to Leo's words. There is a warning content about suicide, sexual assault, and eating disorders. The author is upfront about that in the book and has kindly marked the poems with these topics with an asterisk. For a young writer, I was very impressed how seamlessly Johanna used nature in her poetry. She personifies nature so beautifully her descriptions are remarkable. Many times I would stop to read a line over again, sometimes out loud to feel it on my tongue. Her arrangements of words in a verse or line was often astounding and charismatic. If you are looking for a new poet to read, Johanna Leo is someone to pay attention to. The next book is The Red Chesterfield by Wayne Arthurson. Since we've been talking about covers, I just want to point out that I love this cover. I'm not sure if you can tell from the video, but the entire cover isn't just red, but it's made to look like upholstery fabric that one might use for, say, a Chesterfield. Wayne Arthurson is a new to me author, but he does have other books. He's an Indigenous author. He is Cree and French Canadian. I heard about him from my friend Rebecca from Canada Reads American Style. And her and Shauna have interviewed Wayne Arthurson. So I will leave a link to that in the description below. They will also be hosting a live interview with Wayne on October 16th. I am hoping to join them with other friends. Let me know in the comments if you have some questions that we should ask Wayne. The Red Chesterfield comes in at 102 pages. And for those non-Canadians who are out there and might not know, a Chesterfield is a couch or a sofa. This is probably the most unique, quirky, funny, and odd book I've ever read. Plus, I was surprised, and I don't know why, that it was a crime story. It's a mystery. So let me start by saying that the chapters range from a sentence long 
to a page long. So you go through the chapters very quickly. The main character, M, is a bylaw officer, and he comes across a red Chesterfield that has been left in a ditch. His curiosity gets the best of him, and he finds a shoe in the back of the Chesterfield. Inside the shoe is a severed foot. Now M finds himself in the middle of a murder investigation. Not only did I love how this story was told, but I loved the characters. M has two brothers, wait for it, their names are J and K. There are side characters with names that are not letters of the alphabet. Um, all of them are a little quirky, and I thought this book was brilliant. There are so many layers to it, and if you are hoping for an ending that will be all packaged up with a nice little bow on top, you will be very disappointed, but that's one of the reasons that I think it's so brilliant. I think 10, 20 people could read this and get 10 or 20 completely different things out of it. It's a great one for discussion, so I'm very happy that Canada Reads American Style is getting a group together to do just that. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants something different, enjoys interesting characters, and a little mystery. The sixth book is Midnight Sweat Lodge by Wabgashig Rice. It is 96 pages, but don't let its small size fool you. This book is a real gem. Wab Rice is one of Canada's best contemporary Indigenous authors, in my opinion. This book will most likely be a reread for me at some point. In this story, Wab, as we affectionately call him, has used the tradition of a sweat to tell the story of four people. It begins with people entering the sweat lodge, uh, some for the first time, which I would predict might also be the first experience of readers to even hear of a sweat, you know, never mind having experienced one. So seven large stones called the seven grandfather stones are placed in the pit in the middle of the lodge. They are heated, the sweat lodge gets hotter and hotter, much like a sauna, and the purpose of the sweat is healing. People share what is bothering them in their lives, others listen and bear witness. And this book does two things beautifully. It allows the reader, like myself, to also listen to four experiences of what contemporary life is like living on a reserve. We learn about struggles such as domestic violence, suicide, and alcohol abuse. And we learn about Indigenous culture, spirituality, and storytelling in a compelling way. Second, for an Indigenous reader who can relate to these stories, it reminds them that the old teachings and traditions are opened and available to them still. And for a tiny book, it packs a lot in. Lastly is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty by James Thurber. So here's the thing about this book, or rather it's a short story. It is about 30 pages. I'm not sure exactly because I read it on my Kindle and it took me maybe 10 minutes. I only paid a dollar uh, Canadian, so all is not lost, and I have yet to see the movie with Ben Stiller. But I've seen previews, and when I was visiting Iceland in 2016, our tour guide pointed out some of the shooting locations, so I've always been a little curious about this movie. So the movie was on sometime last week, and we recorded it, but I thought I would read the book first. So one, I have no idea how they made a feature film out of this little story. Two, the movie is obviously different and I'm guessing they embellished on it quite a bit because I can't say, say that there was really any character development or even a real storyline. I don't think I would have even known that Mitty uses his imagination to get through his everyday life if I weren't familiar with the movie previews. So if you've read this quick little story, I would be very interested in what you have to say about it. Um, did you enjoy it? Am I missing something? Will I enjoy the movie? Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you are still looking for more books you can read in a day, I do have 20 other quick reads that I put together in February for my blog. It's called 20 Quick Reads, 20 Novellas. You won't be surprised that the 20 books listed are very diverse, and I will leave a link to the list in the description below. If you enjoyed this content and would like to have more diverse content like this, please hit subscribe. I will include links to the books in this video, 
to the interview with Wayne Arthurson, to Canada Reads American Styles channel if you want to join us for the live YouTube interview on October 16th, and to the list of 20 more books you can read in a day in the description. If you've watched some of my other videos, you may know that I will be doing a series called Mondays with Margaret. If you like Margaret Atwood and want to check that out, I posted a video earlier this week with the first 12 Atwood books we will be reading and discussing. So I will also leave a link to that. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to make every day an adventure. <laughs>